Our new unit is on waves. Here's our different uh, concepts that we'll be going through with waves. The first top topic is wave motion. Um, if you drop a pebble in, in, the, uh, in, in the water, you can see that the ripples from the waves will travel outward from where you drop the pebble, right? So they, they tell you that a wave travels along its medium. So it's going to travel along its medium, but the individual particles, so the, way, the wave is actually going, let me change colors here. So the wave is actually going the, these directions away from where you drop the pebble. So that's the direction or the, the wave propagation. But the particles themselves are just moving up and down, up and down. They're not traveling along the wave propagation. Down below we have a wave and if we take, it's, it's hard to measure distance at, at a wave. So if we take one point of a wave and then we follow that wave down until we come up with that same exact point again. They call that lambda, and that's the symbol for lambda, L-A-M-B-D-A, lambda. And it's sort of like an upside down Y. It's measured, since it's a distance, it's measured in meters. Right. So, you, you don't actually have to choose from that that specific point. You can choose other points. You could say, okay, let's take a point that's a little bit before the bottom of this wave and go to where it's a little bit of the bottom again. That distance, again, is lambda. Okay, and that's wavelength. So uh, from crest, so the high point of the wave is termed a crest which is the maximum displacement, otherwise known as amplitude. The low point of the wave is known as a trough. All right, so from one point on a wave to another point, that's the wavelength. I guess I should write that, wavelength. And that's measured in meters, and that symbol is lambda. Um, waves transport energy. That's their function. They transport energy. <clears throat> we have a single wave pulse, pulse, or we can have continuous waves starting with vibrations. That's known as simple harmonic motion. We mentioned already that they have an amplitude, which is their maximum displacement. The wavelength, which we know as lambda. And frequency and period, we've already discussed and now we need to talk about wave velocity. Um, we know that velocity is distance over time, right, meters per second. And we know the distance in a wave is lambda. And the time that it takes to travel one wavelength is known as period. So we get the interesting equation that uh, velocity equals lambda over t. And if we know that frequency is equal to 1 over period, well, let's go back a little bit. We can take this equation, velocity equals lambda over period, and say that says the same thing as lambda times 1 over the period. And if we know that frequency is equal to 1 over the period, we can put frequency in for 1 over t, and we get this equation, velocity equals lambda f, which is a very important equation. What's the wave speed if the period of a wave is 4 seconds, and its wavelength is 1.8 meters? So we use uh, they want to know wave speed. We substitute in wavelength of 1.8 meters over the period, which is 4 seconds, and we come out with 0.45 meters per second. A fisherman noticed that a float makes 30 oscillations in 15 seconds. So oscillations per time is known as frequency. So the frequency is 30 oscillations over 15 seconds which was a frequency of 2 hertz. The dis distance between two consecutive 
Crest is two meters, that's lambda. We can solve that. We first solve for frequency by n over t, then plug it in our velocity equals lambda f, and we come out with a velocity of four meters per second. What's the wavelength of a wave traveling with a speed of six meters per second and a period? So we have velocity equals lambda f, or velocity equals lambda over t. And solving for a wavelength, we can multiply both sides by period. And we get wavelength equals dv. Plugging in our values, 18 meters. The velocity, so our first velocity equation is lambda f. We've already uh, completed that. Velocity, our second uh, uh, um, equation has to do with uh, the velocity depending upon the medium it's traveling through. All right, so that big equation is velocity equals the square root of tension force over the mass per unit length of the string. So the mass per unit length of the string is known as mu. All right, tension force is the tension in the string, and that's a force, and mu is the mass per unit length. So it's how heavy the, uh, the, the uh, string is for its length. And that's where mu comes from. So let's take a look at that. What happens to the speed of a wave on a string if the tension of the string is increased by a factor of nine? So we have velocity equals the square root of tension over mu. And now what we're doing we're, let's see, uh, we're increasing the tension by a factor of nine. So velocity, the only thing that's changing is a square root of nine. So it ha since it's in the numerator, it has to be increased by square root of nine. So increase by a factor of three. What happens to the speed of a wave if the mass per unit of length of the string is increased by a factor of nine? So now, Now we have velocity equals tension over linear mass, and the linear mass density is now increasing by a factor of nine. Okay. So now we have velocity is the square root one over nine, which is equal to the square root of one over the square root of nine, which is equal to one over nine, square root of nine. So this velocity is decreasing uh, by a factor of three, square root of nine. So decreasing by a factor of three. Types of waves. There's uh, two types of waves. There's uh, something known as a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. Uh, transverse waves, <clears throat> All right, so the motion of particles can either be perpendicular to the wave, that's transverse. So this would be a transverse wave where the particles are moving uh, perpendicular or longitudinal. Longitudinal is this type of wave here. Where we have compressions and expansion. And compressions and expansion. Lo and how I write longitudinal usually is longitudinal, which means the, um, the particles are moving parallel, parallel to the direction of the wave motion. The wave is moving this way, the, the particles are moving that way. Longitudinal, parallel. Whereas transverse, they're moving, and I write transverse this way, and I put a little symbol there, to show that the, the, the uh, wave and the wave uh, particles are moving perpendicular to one another, transverse. Sound waves are classic longitudinal waves. And you can see this if you go next to a speaker and you see the cardboard and the speaker kind of bouncing. Uh, that's actually pumping out those waves. It's compressed areas of compression and expansion. That's what causes sound waves. Longitudinal types of waves are sound waves.